Marty, find out where the police are going to ta- be taking him. Send over a bottle of bubbly with a bucket of ice and card. Have it say, tough break. Get drunk on me. Use the bucket to ice your marbles. Yours, Z. Um, I, have, is that a repeat of a... Did I already give that one? I swear you've given that one. I don't... Now... <laughs> If I did, you're welcome either way. <laughs> I don't know. But it's fitting. Yeah, it is. I mean, the only reason why it sounds so familiar is you... The I, I swear one time you did, what is it, Big Tom or whatever, Big Jim, and you were like, oh, well, I don't think I got his voice down just right. <laughs> For big uh, for Tommy's dad? No, 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 no. For Zelensky? Uh, Zelensky, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I think I did okay that time. Yeah, <laughs> yep, you did. <laughs> All right, welcome to Utterly Useless Podcast, where we spend the best time together and waste your time together. Not really. We don't waste your time. It's enjoyable <laughs> to the time, we, but we trick you. All right, so with me... Straight across from me, we got the Richard of the podcast, <laughs> Richard Criddle, <laughs> Tim McCriddle. Uh, then next to me, my brother podcast. So that makes him Paul. Ooh, hey, <laughs> aka Rob Lowe. If you're not familiar, because I I looked at him like I don't think I knew his name was Paul ever. The uncredited role. Hey, no, I, I know. That, did you notice that too? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> he pointed that out. Oh, did he? Uh huh. When did you point that out? Just a, while you oh. were away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's so weird. He has a pretty predominant role in this movie, and he's uncredited. Uncredited. So uh-huh. Brett's uncredited too. Exactly. So he does it for free. And I'm the Tommy boy. That makes fat, sense. Fat <laughs> guy in a little. <laughs> and I ate paint chips as a kid. Uh huh. So, yeah. Let's get started with our merit badges. I will start. All right, up. merit badges. Oh. What do we got? Oh, 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 sorry, Taylor. Sorry, I didn't wait for you. Um, my merit badge is the gambler's merit badge. Ooh, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. I stumbled upon like there's a lot of advertisements these days, and they sucked me in uh, for like sports betting. Uh huh, and. You know, they're not like, they're like, oh, this isn't the typical kind of sports bet. You know, you can bet on this, that, and other. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I will bet on any, I'll, I'll, I'm going to look for an app that gives me free money. (laughs) And so I found one. It's called Lucra. And it gave me $5 to start off with. And that's all I continue to play with. I haven't, I haven't, you know, put any of my own money in. I've doubled it by now. And all, all it is, is it's, it's person to person betting. That's all it is about sports. Or actually, it's also a placeholder. Like if me and you were to be playing a game of darts, if you have the app, I have the app, it holds the money for us when oh. we place the bet. But then we have to be honest about it, about like, you know, who won, and then it'll send the money to the person. But it's it's kind of interesting because yeah, I've just been betting on basketball all this week and things like who's gonna have the most points at the end of the game or I mean, you can compare anything, which I think would be really hard. Like, you can say, will this person have more points than this other person has assists? So you can, like, compare anything you want. And, yeah, I I mean, I've lost a couple of games, but I've definitely won way more than I have. And so that's why I've doubled my money. And it's it's fun. I just, I just bet a dollar a time because this is entertainment. Yeah. This isn't money driven. Free money. Yeah, free money. And I've well, doubled that free money. That's good because normally, like play, uh, sports bets like that, like you have to put in so much money, and then they'll give you yeah. the free money for putting in money. So that, that's a that's a l- nice. Yeah, if if you go to Lucre and you download the app and you use the utterly useless promo, uh, utterly useless, uh, <laughs> you get nothing except nothing. for what they give you. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> they'll tell you to leave. <laughs> like, oh crap, it's one of them. But yeah. It's been fun for me. I'm not going to put my own money into it. The only thing that I was I was curious about is like, if I ever did run out of money, if I just used a different email, would they give me another five bucks? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so it's like, but it, I mean, it does geotag me? Like every time I place a bet, it's like, where are you located? Oh, okay. It knows. Yep. 
So that's mine. And my merit badge is me holding a fistful of cash, looking at his TV and yelling at it. I don't know. Even though I'm not really doing that. That's just how I see it. No, that's at least when I had my addiction, that's how that that went down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll go next. Um, I kind of told you about it right before the podcast started, but I, it's the start of the new semester at at uh, work, and it was going to be absolutely insane and crazy. And so before I went into work every day, I stopped at Maverick on the way and got myself a boosting beverage every single day this week and after work. <laughs> Every day this week. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Breakfast, Liquid lunch, and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Liquid courage in the morning. Restful, relaxing courage in the evening. <laughs> I've done that before. I know how that goes. So it's probably just a picture of the fountain glowing. <laughs> <laughs> now, does this beverage change or is it the same beverage? It changes. Oh, okay. A little, little variety. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, so my merit badge is something that kind of I stumbled upon, what was it, two weeks ago, and then I, for some reason, like my YouTube started recommending me watching these channels, even though I never watched a single one. I, I was over at my friend's house up in Brigham. Uh, his kids were talking to me about like roller coasters. I'm like, I'll never go on a roller coaster. I, I Fear of heights, fear of uh, plummeting to my death, No. And so they started like, well, you know, you can like virtually ride roller coasters. You can, you know, people like put like those, uh, whatever, the, strap themselves with a camera and mm-hmm. ride a roller coaster. And so they're like, oh, let's just see what it would, f- you'd feel like if you did the Hannibal in Lagoon and, or Cannibal or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. And they, they push play and I'm sitting there watching it and they're just like, okay, like, tell me when you, you feel nervous. And I'm like, I felt nervous the instant we were starting to like leave the safety of earth. <laughs> That's when I start. And, and I realized something as I was watching this, I was like, you know, I've always said I would probably do it for like, you know, a million dollars or something like that. No, <laughs> like, I, I think I would have to be super drugged up so that I don't didn't remember what was going on or whatever, and like th- those videos have helped me. Like my my uh, merit badge is priceless because I don't have a price at the moment that I would rec- that I would uh, be able to charge somebody for going on a roller coaster. So right now it is priceless. Wow. Ooh. Man, that's quite a fear then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, you pay me a million bucks, I'd go on just about any roller coaster that I'm aware of. I don't know. See, my problem is, is I have an overactive imagination, and I can figure out multiple, multiple ways and how I will plummet to my death. Do you know what's funny, though? Is like, uh, as, a, as somebody who was a pilot for a very long time, I did that all the time while I was flying. I was like, what if... What if just the bottom of this plane just gave out and my chair just went, boom, <laughs> you know, ejected me downward? Instead of- oh, believe me, as a passenger in an airplane, I think about that all the time. And then, you know, you have that movie, <laughs> uh, Final Destination, uh-huh. when stuff like that happens. And exactly. so I actually can't calm down in an airplane. And the only time I can calm down is if I, I have to convince myself. And I have to tell myself, you were on land. <laughs> you were on land. And then when we hit like, you know, an air pocket, I suddenly start panicking because I realize I fooled myself. I'm not on land. And now, you know, the the bottom of the floor is going to give way and I'm going to plummet. So <laughs> now you've gone over to England twice. Uh huh. Did you ever drug yourself? I so it was funny. I sat next to this like really, really old lady the first time. And she just knew noticed how wired I was. And she was just like, here, I I have like these Tylenol PMs I was going to take for myself, but I think you need them more. And because I was so wired, I was just partially drowsy. Like these things should have put me down. And I was just so wired. I was just like... Oh man, yeah. if I were you, I would never leave the country because, <laughs> like, uh, overseas, especially because I can't. Sometimes I get, uh, what's it called? 
like oh, what, what is we, it called when you don't like enclosed places? A claustrophobic. But yeah, claustroph- I kind of get claustrophobic in some planes just because I feel I'm a bigger guy sitting next to people who are usually rubbing their shoulders against me, and my legs are like barely fitting underneath in front of me. And so I get claustrophobic, and so I already know if I ever go transatlantic flight, I need to drug myself because I get claustrophobic and that I feel like I'm in an enclosed place. So yeah, I don't know how you could do this to yourself no. knowing what you're going through. See, and I would like to, one of the destinations I'd like to go to is like New Zealand and Australia. Oh, yeah, wow. That's probably never going to happen <laughs> by boat. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, how would, have you ever been on a boat in the ocean? Like besides when we went scuba diving? Um, no, I I'm gonna go on a uh, Alaskan cruise in July of this year. You're gonna have to let me know how that goes because when I went on my first cruise, I was like, "This is different," <laughs> and then I got used to it very quickly. But I was like, because then you you it's easy to trick yourself that you're not in that you're not on land because such a big boat. That it doesn't really rock unless well, it's stormy. See, and when we went scuba diving in Hawaii all those years ago, I was perfectly fine with everything until I couldn't see land. And that's when I started panicking. Mm. So I'm going to be kind of curious how this goes because it's going to be a larger boat. I've been told by many people that you don't really realize that no, you're out. You don't, unless it's a stormy day. Like we we had one stormy day. On my honeymoon where we went on a cruise and all the time we had no, you couldn't really tell you were on a boat until that day it was stormy. And then it was like, whoa, whoa. And then we felt a little sick. Mm. So, yeah. Ooh. Spin the wheel. All right, it's time for Spin the Wheel, where we spin our wheel that decides which questions we're going to ask one another. All right. And since I gave the quote, I'm going first. And I'm getting lick off. Okay. This one came to me the other day almost immediately. I just, just thought of it and I was like, whoa, that's a lick off. It's like it was like Kramer. Whoa. Whoa. That was close. <laughs> that was close. Um Okay. So random person will decide in randomness somehow, whether we knock on somebody's door, whatever. Anyway. You know the milk container in the fridge, like where milk usually lays? Mm-hmm. You're going to lick that. Oh, oh. So we'll just pull out the milk, and oh. then wherever that usually is in the fridge, you're going to lick it. Oh, man. Because, oh, that is one of those, like, to me, like, out of all the super gross things that we've done, to me, that is the grossest. Yeah. That's <laughs> so gross. Because it has those crusties. Of like milk that somehow has like dry, es- escaped and escaped dried, and dried and fallen. <laughs> milk chips, yeah, yeah milk chips. Milk chips. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a really disgusting food. <laughs> Somebody advertised, try our new milk chips. It's gonna be a thing <laughs> now. <laughs> now with less sour. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Oh. So. And Krill, you're to my my left, so you get to go first with the bidding. Okay. Well, let's go with ten thousand. Mm. Ooh, ooh, that's a low. I feel like for Brett. I know. I was sitting there thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm like, where do we start? Where do we start? Well, I almost was going to be like, just for funny. 50 bucks. Oh, <laughs> oh, like, oh. Are you not disgusted by the, this? The, the milk chips are would be yours at that point. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to go 9,000. Oh. Um, I would rather lick the undercarriage of a refrigerator than this. I know, right? So I, I deal with milk on a, on a weekly basis um, with... Uh, large five gallon bags Mm -hmm. so i mean i'm i'm used to seeing so much milk deposits and uh crustiness (laughs) so maybe that's why it doesn't bother me as much (laughs) so i'll go five thousand okay it's yours (laughs) (laughs) well you just either if if you were bluffing or not you just made it that way Easier that much easier for oh, Brett yeah. to tap out. He's like, all right, he's gonna go down. I might as well get. Oh some. yeah, because like here's how it goes with me. Like, what was it when I we 
when I was a teenager, we <laughs> had this one gallon of milk. It was just barely opened, and it was the day of. And I, I have like this terror of drinking sour curdled milk, and so I just walked over to the ref, uh, to the refrigerator, took the milk out, poured it down the sink. My mom's just like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, oh, it's, "It's the day. I I can't drink this." And so my mom's like, "Eh, whatever." My dad comes in. He's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "It's the day." He goes, "No, it's good. Like two to three days after that." I'm like, "I'm like, eh." I just kept on going. He goes, "You're gonna buy me a brand new gallon of milk." I'm like, "Fine. Like I'm not drinking." <laughs> <laughs> and then it was funny. So about a couple of years later, my parents would go up to uh, Logan and get those like nuked. Uh, milk cartons that can be like out and they're flavored like root beer flavored and chocolate m flavored or whatever and jeremy is like and my mom's just like look th these are great and they're also good for emergencies i'm like i will never touch one of those <laughs> I, and it would take an emergency for this and jeremy's just like oh no i i'm perfectly fine with this like you know and i'm sitting there thinking and i'm telling him like you realize all it takes is like one microscopic thing for it to not cook and that thing is curdled. And he's just like, eh, I, I'm fine with it. I, I like this. The next day, he puts a straw into it, scoops, slurps it up, and goes, Ugh. oh, sour. Throws it <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> that's the thing that I cannot stand. And he just was just like, eh, whatever. That would just be like, oh, death to me. I have been surprised numerous times by milk <laughs> and there's some times where i'm like oh that's God. why i smell it before any time i i don't smell it every time but whenever it's past a certain day i'm like i'm smelling it and dates to me just are irrelevant because <laughs> they it, i've heard i've smelled milks that have gone sour well before the expiration date and so mm -hmm. i've just gotten into the habit of okay yeah that's still good and then, what was it? Uh, have you ever accidentally drank something that was f fermented on accident? No. I left something out, like a flavored water. Like, you know, it was like, you know those liquid IVs? Uh-huh. I put it in there, and I left it out for a couple of days, and I didn't, I thought, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, it's a flavor. Nothing should happen. It got fermented. And I was like, Ugh. Oh. Now, the funny thing about that is, like, I will do the, like, I will open it up, smell it, and I'm like, does this what's like, because I, like? I, I will start questioning everything. Is this what spoiled milk smells like? And then I will, like, like slowly, like, take, like, a tad bit of a sip. I'll pour some in the cup, and I'll take it, and I'm like, I think this is bad. I'm not sure if this is bad. <laughs> I think this is bad. Eventually, long story short, I generally convince myself it's gone bad. So <laughs> I could just see, like, having, like, a science kit. <laughs> Time to test it. <laughs> so the other thing is I am the meat checker in our house. Like my wife will call me up from uh, being downstairs. She'll be like, I need you to smell this meat. <laughs> See, is it still good? I'm like, where did I get this title from? I don't have like experience knowing these things, but all of a sudden uh, during our marriage, I'm the person that has to smell the meat and go, yep, it's still good. Hey, me too. And then I'm like, well, at least you have, <laughs> you, under, you probably know you have more credentials than I do about whether or not the meat's good. And so I, half the time I'm walking away after I did that, and I'm like, is that what meat's supposed to taste, smell like? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well. <laughs> All right. All right, Krill, you're up next. And you got, what, 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 what would you have done? What would you have done if you were chased by the T-1000? Ooh. So T-1000 is... Arnold, right? No, it's the other one. Oh, is it the in, the in cop? T two, yeah, the cop. Okay. If you started, you just you saw him randomly. Same guy. I know nothing of the movies, right? You know something of the movie? Oh, really? Sure. Okay. But you see him. You know he's an old man, you know, living here or living in the world. But you see that guy, and you see him like metal shape change. Uh huh. He starts chasing you. So wait, what, what do you do? So it's. You know Robert Patrick actually exists, mm -hmm. and he's an older man. Is he the same? Looks the same exact way, in like in the nineteen ninety two movie, yes. or does he look like the old Robert Patrick in this? <laughs> he is the old nineteen ninety two version, Patrick. I T one thousand. You don't want to kill the wrong person. I mean, my, yeah, because I. I 
Because it'd be, you know, maybe he's just like, just decides to just like scare people. Just like he look, look, looks at somebody and just starts <laughs> running after them. <laughs> nope. This is, this is the kind of like John Mulaney and Hitler. Yeah. This is, yeah. It's the T 1000. It's the de aged Patrick. You see him. He's, he connects eyes with you. Well, obviously, killing him in the normal fashions would be difficult. So, you, in a, as we learn, freezing him is, is how you got to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess I try to go to like the University of Utah like lab or something like <laughs> yeah. that. And uh, the entire time I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, be like, hey, hey, mister, before you before you, we continue chasing you chasing me, what do I do in the future? Maybe we'll just agree to not do that. <laughs> I'll sign a contract. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> I'm willing to do nothing if you especially if you pay me. Let's handle this like gentlemen. <laughs> like, uh, you know what? I'm fine with, you know, let's agree to like I you know, I, I don't feel as though I will do anything now. And uh, suddenly another one comes out from the future and he's like, No, he's good. He changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just gets you and he's like, Your car warranty is expiring. <laughs> <laughs> that would <laughs> like, no, they have T1000s now for this? <laughs> New Apple terms of service. <laughs> <laughs> you will sign this. Um, uh, yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> Man, if, if this scenario, because I wouldn't know where to go to like do get like what liquid nitrogen or whatever it is. Yeah, I would just like I said, Brett would go like Brett said go to the lab or something. But then it's like under lock and key or something. Yeah, I I mean, in the long run, I think I would just try to get lost in people, and then you know. Doesn't he have that scanning mechanism? He does, but like I, I feel as though if you were to do something like it's one of those things where they're trying at least in the movie, they're trying to do something and they stay in a central area. It's just like at least, you know, for as bad as the third movie is, at least they actually went out to the countryside and started doing something away from people. Mm -hmm. Let's make it more interesting. It's on Halloween. <laughs> Ooh. I'm wearing a mask. You can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I dressed I, up like him. Exactly. <laughs> like, hey, brother, how's it going? Are you looking for him too? <laughs> yes. I'll be back. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I probably would die with this uh, by the time I find anything. But I mean, I guess I do have the leg up trying to find liquid nitrogen. But I don't get Arnold Schwarzenegger to help me, right? Like he's not coming. I mean, if. No. I mean, you should be getting Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. If he's coming back to get you, Arnold Schwarzenegger should be back to help you, too. Uh -huh. so. He's like, where is he? <laughs> yeah. Where's Arnold? Where's Arnold? He's like, wait, you can't fight me yet. I haven't got my my guy. Time out. Time out, bad guys. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just trying to research on the go. Where can I get some liquid nitrogen? <laughs> and then I got to home alone this guy. <laughs> Or it's gonna fall on him and freeze him, and then he's gonna push him over, and I'm gonna not make the mistake of just leaving him to like unthought. I'm gonna like murder him <laughs> in a way of like dicing him up and taking him to different places. Actually, wherever this happens, I'm gonna phone you, and I'm gonna be like, "Hey, you guys have a like a large like walk-in yeah, size freezer? Yeah. I do, uh -huh. two of them. Or just take it to Mount Doom, drop him in." <laughs> You're waiting for Arnold, and you get number five <laughs> from Short Circuit. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, oh. You're going to be more hindrance than help. Like, all right. You, do you have that death laser? Shoot yeah. the death laser, yeah, please. Yeah, the death laser, then, yeah. Let's... <laughs> all right. Uh, Brett, you're up next, and you get what if. All right. So what if, instead of... so. It's going to be a Groundhog's Day type of a thing, except here's the different thing. You get to live from one Groundhog's Day to for 10 Groundhog's Day before you repeat, you go back 10 years and start all over again. Oh my gosh, that would be good and bad. What period of 10 years of your life would you want to 10-year Groundhog Day yourself? Essentially, it's 10 years that hopefully I'm walking away improved. Yeah. But man, that would that might almost turn me more insane than if it was the same day. I don't know, but it would take longer. 
Because the whole time I'd be sitting there and be going, and maybe this is the one. This is the one. And 10 years later happens. Boom. I'm like, no, that work. Um, Does it have to be something that's already happened or can it be something that will happen? No. I mean, like, so for example, you could say from the age of 35 to 45 at, you know, at your age 45 Groundhog's Day, voom, back gosh. to 35. Do you de-age as well? Yes. Oh, gosh. I would go my 20s to 30s. <laughs> It'd be fun to relive. I, you have the energy. You have the energy. Yeah, you, I'll do you that. don't. You don't have to live like if your body is achy and living through that constantly. Twenty to thirty sounds good. It's you get. You don't have as much health problems. And you're out of school. Yeah, you're. Well, yeah. Like, well, you're in college, but you're. But if you're of, repeating it, I wouldn't do school. I'd just do something else. And then you find out that like not doing that is also what's kind of keeping you like not. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then with school though, the good thing is, is like if you've done it before, you're like I know this stuff. Because mm-hmm. you retain the information, mm-hmm. and then you could get different degrees, and you could be Ryan Reynolds and uh, was it Van Wilder, where you're just always going to school for like half, almost more than it, almost a decade. Yep, easy. What do you? What about you, Brett? I think I would do seventeen to twenty-seven. Yeah. Personal reasons, I'd probably pick 23 to 33. Because <laughs> certain parts, I just don't want to relive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'd do probably 21 to 31. Yeah. Because, you know, the way I, I feel like you're, you're, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Because <laughs> the way I see it, if, if I, because st- at the age of 17, I was st- still a junior in high school. I could, like, really, like, do good on my grades. And then each year, possibly try to you know get this scholarship and mm-hmm. then go to this school and then I repeat that and so I would have had all the you know I, okay yeah I could see that but yeah I could be the next Steven Spielberg yeah there you go you go, go to, to film, film school, school. uh huh there you go all right back to me and I get random question okay I'm gonna try to articulate this the best I can. So I'm gonna. It's gonna be like story time. So you're wandering down the street in downtown Salt Lake, and this bum <laughs> approaches you. Yeah, we haven't talked about bums in a while. <laughs> Homeless people. Um, comes and he goes. I have a magic slot machine that changes three attributes about you: either what for the good, for the bad, or keeps you the same. That's the options. It'll, it will be your strength, your intelligence, and your speed. And so you either get something that, you know, uh, you get multiplied by two, essentially. So you double whatever it is, your strength, your intelligence, your speed. You stay the same. Or you get a decrease by half of whatever it is. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a slot machine. So you could potentially get all doubles. Or you could get all the same, or you could get all halves, or you could get a combination of any of those. Would you play? Okay, I'm going to roll my D20, let's say. <laughs> and you got a zero? Oh. Or what? I don't know. Okay. Oh, I was like, zeros aren't possible. Zeros aren't possible. <laughs> oh, you got a natural just, 20. No, I, oh. that would just, okay, I got 18. I'm feeling pretty good with myself. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you're you're giving me a Dungeons and Dragon type of a situation, yes. so I'm going to make my decision based on a Dungeons and Dragon that, role. This is 100. percent My <laughs> mind was like, this is a D and D kind of thing. You said we have three, only three chances. So like, so you know how on the old slot machine, yeah, they would be like there's three, yeah, columns. That's what it would be like. If you got a cherry, 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 that would be like essentially, you know, Do you, how many times can you play? You just play once. Oh. So whatever it is, it locks you in. So lemon, 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 you got like, you know, the worst traits of all of them. Yeah, you got <laughs> you got those three traits halved. You're you're half as strong, half as intelligent, and half as half as fast. You know what? If I was half intelligent, I wouldn't mind because I'd be the half I would not be as smart as I was. So I'd be like, hey, hey, cool. I don't mind going a little duh. Uh, so you know what? I'm all in. Okay. Cha-ching. Let's do this and spread locked in first. All right. All right, so we're gonna do your strength. Guess what, Brett? You got a, you got your mo- doubled in strength. 
Sweet. Yeah, bodybuilder. And then, oh, wait a minute. Doing. You can beat the T-1000 now. Exactly. Take that, T-1000. All right. Hold on. Why is this? Maybe. No, you know what? It's broken. It's broken. Okay, there we go. Okay. Brett, this is the real one. I have to hit stop with this. Okay, never mind. Your strength is the same. Okay. Okay. That's, that's a bummer. I was doubled just a second ago. <laughs> your intelligence is doubled. All right. And your speed is halved. All right. So I, I that's how I, I would have done it. You know it. what? I, I will like intelligently not uh, pick any fights with bears. <laughs> All right, Criddle. Let's see here. Your strength. Is doubled. Hey, that was mine. <laughs> oh, your intelligence is doubled. Have mercy. And your speed, oh my gosh, is doubled. You got the jackpot. Have mercy. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm just curious about this right now. I <laughs> I am half as strong. <laughs> I am the same in, as an intelligent same in an intelligence. You do good. But I am doubled in speed. <laughs> I, I think that's the worst one. <laughs> Actually, no, I mean, I guess I'm fast, but I'm not strong. Yeah, you make bad, and, the same. and you make bad. Or wait, no, did, normal. Oh, you're, okay. <laughs> That'd be cr- Actually, the worst one would be if you've got like half in intelligence and doubled in speed, because then you'd be fast making bad decisions. What if you were half intelligence, doubled in strength and speed? Would that be a disaster too? Double intelligence, half strength. No, no, half, half intelligence. So, uh-huh. And then double in strength. And oh, yeah, because then you'd be this like, you know, I, I, I'm I, extremely strong. I bet you I could pick, I, I bet you I could take that guy out. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you I could run away from the law. Oh, I can. Oh, oops. except they're in a police car. Oops. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. Yeah, you'd have a lot of oops moments. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> My bad. All right, Curly, you're up. And you have how much? How much would it take if every time you talked, you had to put a piece of food in your mouth before speaking? <laughs> How much would it, I need to do this? <laughs> it has to be food, not liquid, right? Food. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, food, liquid, whatever. So you're, this is called the Brad Pitt, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven. He eats um, everywhere. Yes. Uh, he eats on Bullet Train. <laughs> oh, does he? Yeah. Oh. Um. Bullet Train movie of the year. Yes. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, man, I got to pay for all that food I'm carrying around <laughs> to have a conversation because gum it, does count. Oh, oh, well, if gum counts, it's just, man, you chew gum too much, your jaw is just going to be raw. Yeah, I heard of someone recently having like a lot, almost like a, their jaw locked up because they chewed so much one day. Wow. Um, uh, I'd 500,000. Because gum is a thing, <laughs> I'd say realistically. You can always do mint. But this is the rest of my life. That's the problem. Like <laughs> The ask isn't that hard now since you allowed gum. Gum, mints, lifesavers. I'm just going to turn into like a teenager and just text all my answers. So I'll be sitting right next to you. And I'll be like, <laughs> you answer, ask me a question. I'll just text you and I'll just kind of put my phone down. You're in the middle of an interview and you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. Let me get one of these delicious <laughs> sweets in my mouth. Sir, there's no eating during the interview. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just an old person at this young age of, <laughs> of 30. I'm a half the intelligence. I played this slot machine with this old, this, this uh, homeless man. <laughs> homeless man. I do bad. <laughs> <laughs> um,. Yeah, I think I'm paying for the duration more than anything, and I'm. Uh, I think Brett's on to something. I'm going around five hundred thousand too, because I still got a lot of life to live. I'm surprised it's so high, because like I figured you'd be like, I don't want to talk with anyone. So, oh, but I'm a talker. Oh, I, I'm not a talker, and yeah. so it'd be like, like I avoid so many social situations in church, back seat, back row. So I mean. And then the instant it's over, I go I'm, shopping. Headphones in. Yeah. Oh yeah, I go shopping. Yeah. I put my. He- I won't go shop to the grocery store if I don't have my headphones. <laughs> I, I want to talk to the least amount of people in my life as possible. I'm kind of surprised that you don't do Walmart pickup, Brett, because 
That is the greatest creation known to man. I don't trust the people at Walmart. That's it's, why. That's like, true. I, 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 I feel as though they're well, just going to be... Well, if it comes to like, like, produce, I could get that. Yeah, I'm just like, I could just see that and be like, oh, let's grab two gallons of milk. Oh, today, today's January 16th, January 17th. Mm. Like, you evil, evil people. <laughs> this needs to go first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So it is Brett we're ending with, and you have... Kiss, Mary, Kill. All right. So for Kiss, Mary, Kill, I have T'Challa, Thor, Steve Rogers. <laughs> I was like, you're going to throw in Steve Urkel into this mix? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Unless he's T'Challa, Thor. All right. It's it's probably going to be T'Challa that I'm killing. <laughs> oh. oh. I know, which is so taboo to say. <laughs> yeah, but I love me some Steve Rogers, and I love me some Thor. And T'Challa's movie, I just, I mean, I, I probably I think I've only watched it once, but I don't think I have it in me to watch it again. I, I think the first Black Panther is the most overrated. It's not bad, but it's so overrated. Uh huh. I agree. I, I think I'd put it somewhere beneath Ant Man and Spider Man, which those to me are like the the middle of all the movies. In well, the- one of those things deserve to be there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which one's that? Uh, Ant Man. Ant Man. Do you think Spider Man's below the bottom half? Of here's the-, the here's the sad thing. Tom Holland Spider Man, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Except for, Except for No Way Home. No Way Home is like one of the best Spider-Man movies. Since no Way Home is the one that's with... Um, Toby and Garfield. Oh, that one. Yes, yes, yes. That one's all right. I think all of them are all right with Tom Holland. They don't do it for me. But the thing is, is I thought you were so behind... Um, what's his name? Andrew Garfield? No, no, no. The ver- first Tom Holland... The bad guy, um, Mike uh, Ke- Michael Keaton. Vol- Vulture? Yeah, I thought you loved Vulture as a bad guy. I liked him because he was a bad guy, but he had a ba- he was villainous for a reason. It wasn't like, you know what, I'm going to take over the world because I'm just that egomaniacal. It's just like, you know what, I was a hardworking man. Then the stupid Avengers like destroyed my life because of technology. So now I'm going to use technology and I'm going to do like evil stuff with it. I'm like, you know what? It 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 kind of reminds me of one of those Dan, the Dan Brown book Inferno. As I was reading it, there was like, you know, this guy had graphs and charts <laughs> for like, reasons why he was going to do what he did. I'm like, you know what? He's doing evil things, but you know what? He has data to back it up. I can't. <laughs> I, <laughs> Just anybody listener that has an evil plan, come with a ten point presentation on to a show Brett of why you should join his. Side. Exactly. I mean, like the Bond villains, you know, you they're just like, oh, what do you want? I do. I want to flood the world, and only like these select people. Like, well, give give me a reason why these are your select people. Like, what are your charts and graphs? And you know, <laughs> maybe I might be on your side. I'm just a Robin Hood here. Exactly. <laughs> I just want to pay the bills. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm on. I'm drinking your Kool Aid now. <laughs> um, back to the story T'Challa is unfortunately dying mm-hmm. um, also I didn't find his character very I don't know sound, I mean <laughs> it sounds so bad anything I say about this is going to sound bad I just didn't find him I think he was more of a complete character in Civil War when he made his yes, appearance than when he, in his own movie, sadly. Mm, yes. Yes. If they didn't make that movie and they went off of that, he's more of a relatable person, more of an interesting person. But uh, because of that, man, either way, Steve Rogers and Thor are going to out... You said Thor, right? Mm-hmm. Are going to outlive me. I think I'm going to kiss... Now, are these the... Uh, as seen in, in the Marvel the MCU, okay. yes. Okay, okay. I got to know who I'm going to be looking at for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go with Thor because he can travel. He can, you know, different planets, go with him anywhere. Yeah, I'm going Thor, kissing Steve Rogers. So I, I'll do similar. I'm going to marry um, Thor because I think we can be drinking buddies. And 
we'll be playing video games. Oh yeah, having a good time. Oh, you get to play with Korg, and we get to play with Korg. That's so awesome. Um, but I'll 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 kiss T'Challa and kill Steve. Oh, interesting. So I, I'm, we're all gonna be different. I'm going to marry Steve Rogers. I'm going to kiss T'Challa, and I'm gonna kill Thor. And then after I kill him, I'm gonna go. Guess what, guys? I just killed a god. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to kill my husband. Exactly. Look, I got his hammer. <laughs> <laughs> he can't pick it up. Come on. He killed Thor. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. And it fell on my the book that I was reading. I'll never get <laughs> That'd be funny. It just, I, really, I really wanted that book. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst place I met ever. Oh, man. Can somebody go grab the Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> it landed, he landed on Steve Rogers, except he's worthy, obviously. Yep. Fake news. All right. Now we got some fake news. So with the fake news, I'm going to read each round. There's three rounds. Uh, each round, I'm going to read three headlines. One headline is true and two are fake. Let's get it on. All right. So the first one here is in round one, Webster Dictionary added front of me in 2022. Number two, Kansas man lived in a bunker since end of Mayan calendar. Number three, a girl asked if she could keep a unicorn in her yard. L.A. County gave her a license. Oh, man. So plausible. So plausible. Anything happens in California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Friend of me... In the Webster's Dictionary, I mean, like uh, any the instant they started putting muggle and stuff like mm-hmm. that in the Webster's, started actually paying attention a little bit more too. Exactly, and then it's just like anything's good to go for the Webster's Dictionary, and then unicorn. What was the third one again, or second one again? Second one was Kansas man lived in bunker since the end. Since end of the Mayan calendar. Now, if you said like Idaho man, because I would just assume that'd be like in the panhandle, that I think that would I would really jump on to that one. Um, I'm not sure about Kansas man though. I mean, Kansas has open farms and yeah, but like most of like the the like militia type people or whatever are in like the panhandle of Idaho. <laughs> it's true. That's what they say. Um, That's what people say. I'm going to go with, oh, it's probably that one, too. I'm going to go with, hmm, frenemy is in the dictionary. Uh, I'm going to go with the Kansas man. All right. Well, you're both wrong. Oh. <clears throat> a girl asked if she could keep a unicorn in her yard. L.A. County gave her a license. Gosh dang it, California. I know. <laughs> it makes it so easy. Uh, little does the girl uh, the L.A. County know, she classifies rhinoceroses as unicorns. <laughs> you know, California is basically a just one state amusement park. <laughs> a very expensive amusement park. Well, I, I heard that for the 10th year in a row, they have a convention to basically sus- kind of secede and create a 51st state. And I'm like, that needs to happen. It does need to happen. I can say that because I'm from California, so don't hate me, Californians. <clears throat> yeah, you're you're a northerner where yeah. you guys are like completely different mindset people yeah. than the southerners. Yep. Which is so weird because you're closer to Oregon, which is weird O's. That's true. Kind of like I'm hot. in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is I've talked to Oregonites uh-huh. <clears throat> and my understanding is like <laughs> just like I I mean, I don't know. I think Utah and Salt Lake are very are similar, uh-huh. but it sounds like people who are not of Portland don't really like agree at all with a lot of Portland's, you know, yeah, ideas, and they're very opposite. Where the city is definitely Portland is very Democrat and r- liberal, where the outskirts and everybody else is like conservative and yeah, Republican. Yeah, so, I mean it's similar here in Salt Lake City, but I don't think it's quite so. Polarizing? Polarizing, correct. No. Okay, round two. Um, Spam figgy pudding sells out ahead of the holidays. Number two. Man sentenced to eight years after testing feline nine lives myth. Number three. 
Nestle unveils newest chocolate bar, the Omega. Hmm. Okay, I'm spam figgy pudding. No, like I, I know some people in England, and they like their figgy pudding for uh, Christmas, and I can spam. Ah, oh, I I can't I can't see people in England getting behind that. No. And then, hmm, I have never heard of a Nestle Omega bar. I would have heard of that. Nestle Omega bar. The Omega. Chocolate so big that it will eat you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I would have heard it. No. Let's I'm, see. Then I'm, man sentenced to eight years after testing feline nine lives myth. I'm doing that one. Yeah. I'm. I, you know what? I, I'm going to go with that one. All right. You both are incorrect. Oh. It is spam figgy pudding sells out ahead of the holidays. Wow. Wow. S- People in England. Stuff posing as meat. <laughs> I don't even know what spam figgy is. <laughs> so I was grateful to find out it was a thing when I was researching. <laughs> I was like, okay, this may sound more plausible <laughs> that it's fake. Um, okay, next one. We're going to go for Ofer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A double Ofer. <clears throat> okay, number one. Lost and found Powerball ticket earns North Carolina man $1 million. Or I should say $1 million. Number two. Scientists discover good gut bacteria found in most household carpets. Number three. Larry the cable guy comes out as an anti-Trumper. I'm going to go with the carpet just because that sounds weird. Each, I thought you were like hmm. staring at me to figure me out. Uh, uh, let's go with the the carrot cable guy. You're both incorrect. <laughs> it is lost and found Powerball ticket earns North Carolina man one million dollars. All right, we offered it. Yep, I kind of thought you'd see through that one. <laughs> so yeah, all right. Well, that was... uh, We're both losers. Fake news. So we're going to do a recast this week. Um, We're going to be recasting the movie Tommy Boy with modern actors. So with that, I guess I get to go first. I didn't even Mm -hmm. realize my placement in this. Now I got to think strategy. I, I honestly have my whole lineup set. Like I have others in there, but... I want it to be these people. <laughs> so if I don't get all of them, it's going to destroy me. And I don't think you guys are going to pick my Tommy. I don't think you're going to pick my Richard. I Richard. I don't think you're going to pick my Beverly, which Beverly is the uh, stepmom, so to speak. And Paul is... The uh, uncredited. Uncredited. <laughs> Rob Lowe. I'm, I'm assuming that everybody's seen this movie by now, so it's the stepbrother slash Beverly's... <laughs> supposed to be Beverly's son, but then yeah. you find out they're married. Um, So I'm going to pick Paul, which I didn't realize this to now, is going to be played by Paul Rudd. So nice. Paul by Paul Rudd. Paul by Paul All Rudd. Right. No, now I, as I was recasting this, I don't know if any of you thought of this. Did you guys notice that? I don't know. To me, looking back in this movie in the '90s, David Spade, Chris Farley, even Rob Lowe, they seemed older yes. than they probably were. Like I almost, I didn't look back, but I wanted to look back and see how old they were when they played these characters. I'm like, like if you asked me, as I think they were all in their thirties. Yeah. So like. They just looked like they were younger. Well, oh. the, to me, they looked like they were in their 30s. Yeah. I, I always thought people back then, like Rob Lowe, I mean, and yeah, I never thought in a million years they were in their 20s. I'm a bad judgment of age. I am too. Mm-hmm. All right. Next to you is is Criddle, right? I'm in the middle. That's right. Criddle's in the middle. The Criddle's in the middle. Yes, Criddle's in the middle. Okay. Um, so you picked your Paul. Mm hmm. I will pick my Tommy, and I'm going to go with Michael Sarah. Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to fix this now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm also now curious of who you're going to pick as your 
When you hear the rest of my cast, it'll all make sense. Because I could have seen Michael Sarah as um, Richard. Richard, yeah. I know. Oh. <laughs> oh. What? I think I figured out his Paul. I think <laughs> his Paul or his no. Or I think I, I think I figured out his Paul. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm curious. It's not on your list, is it? No. <laughs> oh, good. All right, All right, Brett, you're up. Okay. So I'm gonna go with my Richard. Oh, Richard. I know, and I'm gonna go with Andy Samberg. And, okay. Okay. I like that. All right. Now I'm curious of who your Tommy boy is, though. But I think he could play, I think he could do just about anybody with Andy Samberg. I think the options are much more open. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Your wheel. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get out of your <laughs> Uh All right. So my Paul is going to be Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I should have saw that coming. I could see that he can, yeah, he absolutely could play that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right, Cradle, back to you. Okay. I, I want to find out more about this this Michael Sarah situation going on here. Okay, uh, <laughs> I am going to go with my. Uh, I'm going to go with my Paul. Okay. No, wait, 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 wait. Let's, you guys already you picked your Richard. I did. He okay. did. I, um, I'll, I'll go with Paul. I'm yeah. going to go with Jason Schwartzman. Oh. Jason Schwartzman is which one? Remind me. I'm going to just look at him up. Because <laughs> you're not <laughs> saying anything. Uh, um, he plays in... Uh, he's the main villain in uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. World. Yeah. See, I thought you were going to go with Will Arnett. I thought you were going to go like a Arrested Development type of a thing. Why can't I? Can't I find him? I'm googling. I'm googling and find out all these other people that are. That's weird. Okay, I'm going to pull up Scott Pilgrim then. I am spacing. Okay, I was thinking that guy. Okay. And that is your, that's your Paul? That's my Paul. Okay, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're all directors of our film, and no, there's no wrong answers. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, now it's me. I'm going to unveil my, my Tommy Boy and Richard and leave my Beverly for the end, because, like I said, I don't think you guys are going to take her. Don't take her from me. Okay, so my... My Tommy boy is gonna be Jason Siegel. Okay. And that, I could see that. Mm hmm And I'm keeping this duo, well, not really a duo, but uh Richard is gonna be Neil Patrick Harris. Oh. I really like it. Oh. My wife told me not to do this. <laughs> She's like, No, it's not that good <laughs> as you think it is. <laughs> but I think it works. Tommy, uh, Jason Siegel and Neil Patrick Harris, because I think Jason Siegel plays kind of like a moron and mm -hmm. could be slapped around, and Neil Patrick Harris can play serious. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, Cradle, you're up. My Richard is Kieran Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. this is a Scott Pilgrim movie. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you said that was your Richard? That's my Richard. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> so is he gonna go for uh, knives, or is he gonna go with Ramona? All right, I, I'm just curious at this movie because I'm seeing Michael and Kieran travel to the Midwest. <laughs> okay, I could just—I don't know—I could see yeah. uh, Michael Sarah kind of being the goofy, lazy you know, entitled kid mm -hmm. and Kieran's like slapping him, like get yeah, it together. I could too. Yeah. He kind of does that in Scott Pilgrim. Okay. All right. Is this Tommy? So here's Tommy. All right. Let's see who it is. <laughs> My Tommy that was paired up with Andy Samberg. Is it going to be Tracy Morgan? <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> 
I, I will tell you, I dislike Tracy Morgan on SNL, but you know what? I do love Tracy Morgan on, on 30, 30 Rock. Rock yeah. And so I'm like, if we could get... That. I am watching this movie unfold in my mind. Okay, this needs to happen now. <laughs> I'm just seeing like, <laughs> like if we, I, I mean, are we doing an exact like word for word re- reenactment of Tommy Boy? Because <laughs> fat guy in a little coat, oh Richard, <laughs> yikes! I mean, it, it I, works. I, 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 I would like you know this Tommy to go see a doctor spaceman. <laughs> <laughs> you might have just won this. It doesn't hurt here so much. Doctor, do he hear here so much? Doc, Doctor do Spaceman, <laughs> it hurts right here. I can't do it, Tracy. All right, and my Beverly is Charlie's Throne. Okay, yeah, that's a good pick. I I don't know why I didn't even consider her. I was looking for somebody exactly like her. So that's a really good pick. Yeah, you definitely got that one from under me because didn't think of her. Not the biggest Charlie's Throne act. Uh, no, but she is like so ageless because I was yes. like trying to find somebody to pair up with Zac Efron, <clears throat> and I'm like, you know, some of the people yeah. that were are her his age. I'm just like, it doesn't work. But I'm like, you know, Charlie's Throne is older, so can be kind of like the Bo Derek, uh-huh. but also is she's also ageless, possibly like Bo Derek from, mm-hmm. you know, the exactly. I yeah. was looking for an ageless yeah. person too because yeah, Beverly's supposed to be older. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's my turn. Yep. Um, this is the only one that's not <laughs> from Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Denise Richards. Ooh, mm. that's a good pick. That's. I feel like she's kind of ageless, too. Jason Schwartzman and Denise Richards. I like it. All right, I'm just making my notes here. All right, my last pick. That this was somebody who I, I was, I mean, I went back and forth. I'm looking now again to make sure. I I do have some honorable mentions for this one, but I think I want this person to be my Beverly. I'm gonna pick Julie Julia Louise Dreyfus. That's a good one. That would work. Yeah, I think her and Paul Rudd. I think that could work. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm still trying to get over. Uh, Tracy Morgan here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Summing up my team. So I've I'm gonna start off with just everybody's Tommy, Richard, and Paul, Beverly. So mine is Jason Siegel and, and and Neil Patrick Harris is the duo, Tommy Boy and Richard. And then Paul Rudd is Paul and Beverly is Julia Louise Dreyfus. Maybe do we think that Julia Louise Dreyfus actually is scam worthy? I think she could scam. I mean, I'm just curious. She does a pretty good job in. I mean, I've never seen the, the TV show Veep, but like for her being like Madame Hydra or whatever, like yeah, she, I think that's true. I've seen Veep. I think so. Okay, and then Criddle's Tommy Boy and Richard <laughs> is Michael Sarah and Kieran Culkin, and then Paul. They have to be. Oh, oh, they even have a bed scene. We need to take out like the motel <laughs> thing, and they are both in the same bed, yep. though. That's what we need. Do they they sleep in the same bed in Scott Pilgrim? Uh huh. I yep. forgot about that. It's been so <laughs> long since I've seen that movie. I, I watch it at least twice a year. <laughs> I, I love it so much. I was very surprised when I introduced it to my wife that she liked it, and I was like, "Wow, I didn't see that coming." All right, so yeah, Michael Sarah and Kieran Culkin, and then Paul is Jason Schwartzman, and Beverly is Denise Richards. Which Denise Richards once again, bravo for pulling that out. Like I didn't even. Do you know what you should do for Paul? <laughs> you should have done for Paul the two, uh, like the Japanese twins. <laughs> you could have two. <laughs> <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then Brett's um, Tommy and Richard is Tracy Morgan and Andy Samberg, which is just. I'm just curious about Andy Samberg. I think Tracy Morgan could pull this off 100%. Andy Samberg, I'm still trying to picture a perfect like seriousness from him. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I could see it because he's done it before in other things. I just want to see it now. 
this this has got to happen. Yeah, be, let's come crowd, on Hollywood. Let's crowdfund this. All right, and then your Paul is Zach Efron, which no shocker there, mm-hmm. and Charlie Theron, which very a probably best looking couple there. Yeah. So props to you. All right. All right, so that's uh, recast is a Tom Boy movie, <laughs> even though it is a movie that is could never live up to the original. No, but it'd be for funsies. Okay, let's move on to our recommendations. So my recommendation is, it's a it's it's this is a recommendation to only a certain type of people. It's people who are it, it's the show Dahmer. If you if you're okay with a very dark show about you know Jeffrey Dahmer and if you know anything about Jeffrey Dahmer this movie makes you feel I mean this show makes you feel icky. It's on Netflix. That's the one with uh what's his face from American Horror Story, right? Um I don't know. I mean probably. I don't know who you, in- you know the uh the the you know first season of American Horror Story the 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 supposed teenage kid who you find out is actually dead and also evil yeah it probably is him i don't remember well no it, it is him okay so i was just curious yeah it's the brand new one that netflix came out with i i recommend it but it's only for those who just aren't going to be grossed out because and also you go through an emotional roller coaster because i mean they definitely are there's certain episodes where they film it from a perspective of the the victim oh and like there's like oh man that makes you sad because you learned all this stuff about him and now you know what happened i will say that they were tasteful in the fact that they just they didn't they did a typical 19 like 50s where you don't see most 90 percent of the time you don't see the act and that time times is worse, but in this case, it probably is better that you don't see it. So, kind of like from the Mummy movie, when you know they're doing the live mummification, they do, you know cut to a shadow and just, and then you go into a, a screen or something like that, and so the violence is left to your imagination. Exactly. Yes. Yes, very much so. And and they took and they took um, the neighbor was actually another point of view that they did, which was very weird and interesting. So highly recommend it if it's your thing. If it's not your thing, don't watch it because it is probably one of the worst shows of this type hmm. because it's not for the faint of heart. Okay. Um, my recommendation, uh, aside from watch Tommy Boy, if you haven't, <laughs> yeah. it got pretty f- pretty far, I remember, in our um, Madness re- or Madness Rewatch for comedies. Uh-huh. Um, so watch that for sure, but... I recommend, or my recommendation is uh, to treat yourself, whether it's to get a beverage, to get a crispy chicken sandwich, to get a pair of socks, whatever. (laughs) Get yourself, treat yourself. Treat yourself. (laughs) Just Uh, just to make yourself, your day a little bit better. A little bit better. Yeah. I've been treating myself recently. Like, I've, uh, what is it? I will buy four, like, uh, Chick fil A sandwiches. Eat one and put three of them in the refrigerator. Nice. Yeah. And so when Sunday rolls around, I can have Chick fil A. <laughs> <laughs> You're beating the system. Exactly. <laughs> now, do you like the Chick fil A sauce? No, I'm a ketchup person. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't put ketchup on that, do you? Don't yes, say I, you... I do. Oh, man. He's a dunker. I love ketchup. Ketchup on there? Ke- For some reason, that seems like. Hey, you grew blasphemy. up with me. You should yeah, know. I know. I know. You but, should know. But it's just. I don't think fried chicken and ketchup go together. I think it does. I think it goes <laughs> perfectly well with each hey, other. Hey, chef, would you ever <laughs> would you ever eat fried chicken and ketchup? I mean, hey, to each is their own. <laughs> That's you know? true. That's <laughs> However, true. I will tell you, I I tried something that I, I'm really looking forward to because I didn't have much sauce left. There is a restaurant that I've only seen in uh, the UK. They do have a couple of them. Like, what was it? One of the a couple of years ago when I looked it up, it was the closest one was in Chicago. It is called Nando's. It is a South African barbecue, and they I I ran across at Macy's some of their sauces, and I put what I had left on of that sauce on there. It is phenomenal. Hmm. I, I think 
I'll have to try it. Yeah. Hmm. I think you'd like it. It's, it's uh, some spiciness. I had a, a buffalo chicken sandwich the other day. It was really good. Everybody's eating fried chicken sandwiches except for me. Mm. Well, fried chicken sandwich. I like me some fried chicken. Baka. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my one recommendation is so I f- speaking of kind of SNL, I have not enjoyed anything from SNL in at least a decade. And I I was I was go- f- listening to a podcast and somebody said, you know, if you like SNL skits from like the early 90s to early to or the late 90s to early 2000s, there's a show on Netflix called I Think You Should Leave. It is done by one of the writers for SNL who left probably about like 2018 or something like that. And there, it, there's quick 17-minute episodes. Not all of them hit, but there's like – some of them are so cringy. You're just like, I shouldn't – like it's kind of like the whole Johnny Lawrence thing. Like I shouldn't laugh at this because this is wrong. And then you find yourself laughing at it. And then you watch the next episode. And then there will be another episode where you're just like – like some of the skits don't land and you're just like oh well. but some of them are so funny and so cringy and some of them like what was it one of the ones was uh the like lawsuit commercials from like the mm-hmm. the, the 90s or whatever just totally making fun of those there's one that i watched which was totally making fun of i i didn't even thought thought about this in years like and Back in the day when you'd go to a hotel, when you turned on the TV, it would be the hotel's, like, you know, t- dial this for this, dial oh, this yeah. for this, dial this for this, or whatever. And it totally spoofs some of these things that I haven't thought about in years. It's called... What is it called? I, I Think You Should Leave. There's two seasons on Netflix. A third season's about ready to be done. It, it's Again, it doesn't always land... But I thoroughly enjoy it as somebody who just wants sketch comedy that is not poli- – like, they don't do politics, which is nice. It is just fun sketch comedy. Hmm. I will watch. So, yeah. I well, liked SNL in the late 90s, and early, that's when I watched the most. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, you think of that cast, though. Like, I was looking at – somebody posted on Facebook uh, the cast of, like, the 90s, and I'm like, Wow. All the males made it. <laughs> All the females I've never seen you again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm like, wow, that's and it was a pretty big cast. Like, cause you consider like even though when they do the little introduction of like Adam Sandler and all that stuff, like there's that list of people at the end that don't get the little the moment of their picture, you know, in the video, but then they list them off real quick and they, they had the whole cast. And I'm like, wow, you are all I mean, partly some of you have made it because of Adam Sandler and are still noteworthy because of him. Well, then there's even some like little lesser known ones where you're just like, you know, if you think about it, like Jay Moore was never like huge, but he's like made mit movies. He's has comedy specials. Jay Jay Moore was in the Half Baked. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, now I know who he is. I listen to his comedy every once in a while. But then you got like, what's his name? Is it Kevin O? Kevin O'Neill, O'Neill. or Ke- yeah, or Kevin Neal, ne- Neilan, uh, ne- Neilan. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, he wouldn't be that much known if it wasn't for Adam Sandler. No, but still, if you ask me, he's still hilarious. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the show. Get 